Hello everyone, I am Faith Njeri Ngure and I'll be taking you through this lecture, Magazine Writing and Publishing, BJL 3101. Welcome. And uh, we will start uh, with doing uh, an introduction and uh, through the introduction we'll understand or we'll try to look at uh, what is a magazine writing uh, or what is a magazine, and then we'll proceed with uh, looking at the characteristics and also how you can create a magazine and how magazines are distributed. And to start with the introduction, you'll find that uh, magazines falls in the family of uh, print media, uh, a family that comprises of uh, newspapers, uh, books, uh, journals, brochures, uh, flyers, pamphlets, uh, and you find that uh, regardless of magazines falling in the family of uh, print media, there are some characteristics uh, that uh, tries to bring out uh, the differences or, or the demarcation. And uh, a magazine uh, is just a publication that uh, tends to appear regularly. It appears on a regular basis and it contains uh, information that has some articles, some pictures. And you find that the stories that are always in the magazines, uh, they are feature articles. And uh, now to define what is a magazine, you find that it is a bound pamphlet that is uh, issued more or less uh, regularly and uh, contains a variety of of uh, information for the purposes of uh, um, meeting different needs of the target audience. Therefore, it's uh, just several papers uh, or glossy papers or made papers that are bound together and inside them there are information uh, and uh, this information uh, most uh, likely they are feature articles and they are accompanied by some pictures. Uh, and uh, you find that uh, these uh, information or the articles or the stories that are inside the magazines, you find that uh, they target different audience. You find that uh, most of the magazines, uh, they have an entertainment uh, connotations. Uh, they are there to entertain. Uh, and you find that uh, most of the magazines, uh, writers and publishers, uh, it's like uh, they tend uh, to to angle their stories in such a way they can entertain the target audience, though the other uh, magazines uh, that are different uh, from those that are aimed at entertaining, because you find that there are magazines or publications uh, that uh, touches on technical issues and professional issues. And uh, you find uh, there are different uh, characteristics of a magazine, and uh, with the characteristics, uh, they tend to bring out uh, the, the, the whole aspect of the differences. And uh, the characteristics are there to bring out uh, the differences that are there between the magazines and other print uh, media. And number one, you find that magazines are published on a regular basis. It's not like the newspapers that are published uh, daily. It's not like... Um, other print uh, media that are published maybe after five years or even after one year and others may, that are published daily, you find that magazines, there are different issues or volumes of magazines and it all depends uh, with the publishers. They may make a decision to publish a magazine after a month, after two weeks or even after three months or even after six months or even one issue per Year. And uh, you find that they are published regularly based uh, depending on the publisher. Also, the kind of paper that you, they use, uh, they tend to use a uh, glossy paper that uh, can take in uh, pictures and that uh, can uh, uh, last for a long time because you find that magazines have a long shelf life. Uh, they stay for a long time and this allows them uh, allows the readers to keep on uh, reading the magazines and also for the purposes of storing the magazines uh, you find that uh, they are durable. Also another difference is uh, the targeting most of the magazines, uh, you find that uh, they tend to target. There is a lot of uh, segmentation when it comes to magazine in terms of the uh, target audience uh, who are targeted. And you find that uh, there is a lot of segmentation that is done based on the demographics like age. You may find that there are those magazines that are targeting uh, youth. There are those magazines that are targeting parents. There are those that are targeting uh, uh, older people 
and uh, this uh, is just a segmentation that is done based on the age also based on the gender you may find that there are magazines that are targeting women there are those that are targeting men there are those that are yeah those are targeting women and those that are targeting men also in terms of uh, profession and also the level of education you find that there are magazines that are more of a professional like there are magazine for doctors there are magazine for farmers because it's the the area area of uh, uh, specialization based on their profession and that's why we are saying that there is a lot of targeting in terms of uh, the target audience. Also apart from that uh, there is also another characteristics that tend to bring out the difference between the magazines and uh, other print media and that is lack of immediacy and what we mean with lack of immediacy you find that a lot of uh, magazines they are not even published uh, daily they are published on regular basis and you find that the information that is uh, in the magazine is not uh, the straight news uh, these are these are events that maybe took uh, took place sometimes back and they cannot even fall and um, they cannot they don't have the characteristics of uh, being a uh, instant or even being immediate information and you find that uh, even uh, the readers themselves uh, when they come to reading the magazines they can even read weeks after buying or purchasing the magazine or even after receiving the magazine not compared uh, to the newspapers where there is a lot of immediacy and uh, there are different uh, types of the magazines in the market and number one is the consumers magazines and you find that uh, these magazines they target a uh, general audiences or they touches on the topics that uh, touches on the general public you may find they contain information like uh, information touching on the fashion others touching on the gossip others are touching on the homes uh, affairs like we have the parent magazine we have the salon magazine they tend to touch on the uh, fashion they tend to touch on the home uh, activities on on uh, relationship affairs these are just consumer magazines also there is the business publication and you find that uh, these magazines they tend to serve different businesses or industry or profession and they are often referred to as uh, trade journals they are issued, issued uh, infrequently such as annually as it may be deemed necessary and therefore they touch on the business matters and you find that uh, for them uh, uh, they can be referred to as uh, trade journals and also apart from that they are not issued frequently like the consumer magazines they are only issued when uh, it's uh, deemed necessary there is also the farm uh, publications and uh, these are other types of uh, magazines that tend to touch on the agricultural affairs or they touches on the agricultural industries uh, affairs of uh, the agricultural affairs it's like on uh, animal breeding uh, crop breeding farm machinery and how to manage uh, different uh, farm activities and also scientific researches uh, that touches on the agricultural activities uh, if a uh, uh, magazine contains uh, information on agricultural activities you find that it can be considered or it can be classified as a farm magazine there are also other types of magazines uh, that are known as a scholarly magazines and you find the scholarly magazine touches on the academic affairs and they contain in-depth information that uh, touches on the on the academics uh, researches that has been done before or information that touches on the academic field and um, they borrow as much from a uh, textbook that have been uh, written or materials that has been uh, written and uh, these materials touches on the academic and you find that uh, with these uh, scholarly magazine you'll find that uh, they have more graphs and charts uh, rather than pictures also there is the sensational magazines and you find that uh, these um, are just magazines that uh, contain uh, information like uh, gossips they contain information like humor and
and you'll find that the formatting of these uh, magazines is not uh, uh, as a scholarly magazines or even farm uh, magazines or even consumer magazine because you'll find that uh, they have uh, they are large in size they contain uh, large headlines and also they contain uh, sensational information uh, because uh, for them uh, they are there to to entertain uh, and they contain a lot of humor and uh, information that uh, is not uh, even true and that's why we are saying even the flashy headlines uh, for the purposes of attracting the attention of the readers also they focus on uh, celebrities uh, stories that are related to celebrities there are also other types of magazine the one shot uh, magazine and uh, these are types of publications, uh, they are aimed at uh, capitalizing on a hot topic or a major fit. For them, they are published when they are is a hot topic uh, or a major fit. And you find that it could be, could be a scientific uh, researcher that has been conducted and uh, there is uh, the, the analysis that has been done uh, or the advancement in the scientific field, also the space missions. Also, natural disasters, historic events, and also maybe entertainers like uh, celebrities and also public figure. When there is a, a hot story or a hot topic touching on the advances and also disasters and historic events or even uh, public figures in the society. And uh, therefore, if it focuses, if a magazine, the content focuses on uh, a hot topic, we can categorize it as one shot magazines. Also, there are other magazines uh, which are known as association magazines. And for associations uh, magazine, you find that uh, they are just magazines that contain information that touches on different associations like uh, scouts, uh, medical associations, teachers associations, public relations association, the Rotarians. And therefore, if you have such magazines that contains information that touches on different association in a country or even in a society, they can be categorized as association magazine. We will proceed uh, with uh, a modern magazine. We are in the uh, in the 21st century, and you find that uh, magazines uh, nowadays are find themselves competing with the visual market. There are different other channels or even uh, different media that uh, gives the same, same information that can be given by the magazines. And you find that uh, in, in, uh, in the contemporary world or in the 21st century with the advancement of technology, it's true the magazines are competing uh, with other uh, types of media. And uh, for them to survive, you find that there's a lot that the readers tend to look at from the magazines. And uh, for the magazines uh, to remain relevant in the market, you find that uh, they must uh, have the following elements or they must comprise uh, the following uh, characteristics or the following er elements. And number one is the entry points. And uh, what we mean with the entry points, these are just uh, visual elements that tend to draw the attention of the reader. Or they are just parts that tend uh, to lead uh, the readers uh, into a story or even uh, into different pages of the story. And examples, we have the headlines. Headlines, they are just visual elements that tend uh, to lead uh, the readers uh, into a story. We you may have even uh, stories that have uh, sub-headlines. Also, pictures, apart from pictures, uh, you may find uh, other stories have infographics. Apart from infographics, you may find uh, other magazines have the table of content. And if you find such elements uh, in a magazine, uh, they are there to lead uh, the readers into a given page or even a given story. And therefore, when uh, modern readers are, are buying magazines or when they are purchasing magazines, they tend uh, to look for these entry points. No one wants to have a magazine or even a story without headlines uh, or even stories without sub-headlines or even uh, stories uh, or stories that are not accompanied by pictures uh, or some infographics or, or magazines that do not even have uh, uh, their table 
flow of content and therefore these are just entry points that uh, the readers tend uh, to look uh, at when they apply the uh, page uh, after the cover page you can see there is a table of content uh, and you find that the table of content tend to guide uh, the readers uh, on uh, the pages uh, uh, where they can get different uh, stories. Also, the pictures uh, uh, tend to even to complement the stories that are there in the magazine. This is just uh, an example of, uh, of these elements, of these entry points. And you find that the head headlines are used uh, uh, for the purposes of coming up with a table of content. If you find the, like in page uh, 32 or even page uh, 14 uh, in a magazine that have uh, 16 pages or even 24 pages uh, and in the table of content uh, there is a story like Man Up Part 1. You find that uh, that's the headliner that is in page 24, even page 30 and uh, with the table of uh, content uh, uh, having uh, the story man up part one in page 30 it just guides you on where to flip for you to get the story there is also another element that uh, the modern readers are uh, looked at when they are purchasing a magazine or what makes uh, this magazine to re remain relevant uh, even in uh, in these uh, contemporary century and uh, the other element is the modular design and you find that stories uh, in magazines and also the newspapers they are arranged in uh, a mode and uh, what i mean with a mode is either rectangular shapes or even uh, square shapes and uh, you find that everything that belongs uh, to the story is uh, printed in a mode and uh, as i have said earlier a mode is either rectangular which is either horizontal or even uh, vertical or even square and you'll find that uh, a magazine page consists of a number of different modes and it becomes easy for readers uh, to even read uh, through the story there are two different uh, designs that are use usually used when uh, designing uh, uh, print uh, media there you can use the linear mode or even the modular mode and uh, linear it's just uh, uh, for starting from uh, left uh, to write information flowing from one uh, corner to the other and you find that uh, the most recommended uh, um, designer or type of design is the mode or the modular design and we look at just some few examples you can see an example of how stories have been shaped uh, or how they have been arranged. They have been arranged in a rectangular form uh, and uh, you can see there, is a, there, is a, there are some uh, columns that are dividing the stories uh, and based on how the stories are shaped, uh, you can see it's like they are taking a, a, a rectangular shape. Uh, uh, based on the columns that are dividing them even in the these are uh, story named as the leadership training design you can see they have been divided into different mode and there is a uh, uh, different uh, spacing that uh, the white space uh, is used to divide uh, different stories and therefore it's uh, just a uh, 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 design uh, a design that is usually recommended other than having a linear um, linear design where information uh, runs from uh, one uh, side to the other and you find by using the mode or the modular design it makes it even easy for readers uh, to read uh, through and also the white space there is the white space and also the page uh, looks neat other than having information flowing from one side uh, to the other therefore that's also another element that uh, the modern readers are uh, always uh, looks uh, for when they are purchasing the magazine yeah the other element that uh, the modern readers uh, looks for when they are purchasing the magazine is the infographics and uh, the infographics, these are just a design element that illustrate a story. And uh, it, can, uh, it can be either sidebars, diagrams, uh, charts, maps, 
and uh, cartoons. And you find uh, for the infographics, uh, they make uh, the information uh, visual and also makes it even easier for the readers to read. And uh, we have an example of uh, just uh, some uh, visual elements, uh, the infographics, and these are just uh, cartoons. You may use uh, cartoons for the purposes of uh, making your page attractive and also for the purposes of making uh, uh, your information easy to read. Also, there are uh, other elements uh, that, that can be used like uh, the pie charts uh, and also the graphs for the purposes of uh, making your page look attractive and also for your story to look uh, visually attractive uh, and also for the purposes of making it to read. Like when you're using graphs and uh, pie charts, it becomes easy for your readers to read uh, other than uh, reading a lot of uh, statistics that uh, may be deemed boring. These are just uh, some uh, visual elements, the infographics that can be used uh, when you're designing your magazine. Also, the other element is the story package and uh, with the story package, uh, it's uh, a copy and it's a uh, visual treatment is uh, called a uh, story package and you find a right a photographer and a, a graphic artist, they are supposed to work as a team. They are supposed to collaborate or even to work together for the purposes of creating a story package, for the purposes of creating a story that has uh, some photos, some headlines, and also some quotation. And you can see an example, there is a story with a headline and also with uh, pictures and uh, with these uh, visual elements, and you can see the writers are uh, collaborated with the uh, different photographers and also uh, the graphic artists for the purposes of coming up with a, with a story package. And therefore, the readers uh, want to have a story that has uh, pictures and also that has uh, some graphics uh, and also that is uh, a story that is uh, well designed. The last uh, element that uh, the modern readers uh, look uh, for when they are purchasing a magazine is the color. And nothing makes a magazine look modern uh, like a color. Everyone wants a magazine that uh, has uh, some colors or a magazine that uh, looks attractive. And you find that uh, the color makes uh, a magazine look attractive. And uh, if your magazine has a large budget, you may publish full colors. But also there are other magazines that opt uh, for black and white. But the most attractive magazines in the society, they are those that incorporate colors uh, in their uh, design. And you find that uh, now Nowadays, there are some softwares that are enabling and making it even easier uh, to design a magazine that uh, contains a lot of color with the help of uh, other theories like the color wheel theory that uh, aids uh, us in uh, knowing uh, how you can uh, combine uh, different colors. And uh, you can see an example like uh, the parents' magazine, they have tried to incorporate uh, purple, black, red, white, some different uh, colors uh, for the purposes of making their uh, magazine look attractive. You can see even in the cover page, they have tried to, to mix uh, different uh, colors for the purposes of making their uh, magazine look attractive. And therefore, color is another element that uh, the modern readers are. Uh, tend to look at uh, when they are purchasing a magazine. And now we will uh, proceed uh, to another subtopic, uh, creating a magazine. Uh, we, we are discussing the magazine and therefore you find that creating a magazine is a process. You have to plan uh, to start from one point to the other before you come up with the final, final publication. And you find that... Um, uh, putting a, uh, together a magazine is a great way and uh, to share one's uh, vision in print. You want to share your vision and some information uh, uh, to different uh, readers and therefore some activities uh, and a lot of uh, planning will be required. And number one, you'll have uh, to have a theme uh, or create a theme. And uh, with a theme, uh, you find that uh, you'll have to identify a primary topic of uh, your magazine. In terms of uh, the focus of your magazine, 
which theme do you want to have for your magazine? Which topic do you want to have for your magazine? And you find that uh, magazines, uh, they, they target different audience. And therefore, when you're coming up uh, with a theme, uh, it should be related or even touching on uh, your specific audience. Because there is no way you can come up with a theme that is not uh, related to your audience. If you're targeting uh, young people, you must understand uh, what they like and what they, they don't like and what they love before you come up with a theme that tend to relate with them. And you find that the publisher determines the publi whether the publication shall be a standalone magazine or one in series. And therefore with the theme, even if you will have a standalone magazine or even one in series, the theme you will run with it in different series and publication and you find that short titles are recommended because they sum up the theme nicely the other element uh, when you are creating the magazine is uh, assembling the magazine and in terms of assembling the magazine you'll have uh, to to put together or even to plan on uh, how stories will be written and the content that will be incorporated in the magazine and therefore these uh, will will require you as the writer and the publisher of the magazine to identify writers to identify photographer photographers or uh, and the areas of specialization for different writers also establish a deadline uh, these entails uh, coming up with a plan when you want to finish uh, your magazine or to complete uh, designing and also publishing your magazine. And you find you're supposed to give yourself a reasonable expectation. Maybe you'll take one uh, month or even two months or even three months uh, for you to accomplish uh, uh, designing the magazines or to accomplish the whole process uh, to a uh, next and you are able to have a complete magazine. The other thing uh, you're supposed to consider is uh, creating uh, content and you find that uh, this uh, stage involves uh, writing uh, articles and also column and stories and it is about what you want to say to your readers and therefore, you're supposed to do a lot of uh, research uh, for you to understand what interest or what intrigues your readers. And uh, touching on the stories and columns, you find that uh, there are some readers that may prefer humor stories, the others that may prefer news, others may prefer fictions, others may even prefer interviews uh, that are uh, interviewed. Uh, uh, you interview celebrities or different people. Others may even uh, love or even prefer stories uh, that tend to offer advice or even touches on the current events. And therefore, with the creating content, uh, you'll have uh, to do a lot of research. You'll have to do a lot of survey for you to understand what your readers uh, want uh, to have before writing it. Uh, because you are the one to decide uh, what to say and uh, this will be founded on the research uh, that you'll have uh, conducted for the purposes of understanding uh, your readers. Also the other activity or the other step that you're supposed to consider when uh, uh, creating a magazine is gathering the images. You find that uh, Images are there to accompany stories. They complement each other. And you find that uh, great images keep your readers interested and uh, gives an, or even add another dimension to your story. And therefore, it's important to use uh, photographs that are related to your story and uh, photographs that are outstanding. Also, the other thing is uh, designing the cover page, and you find that uh, uh, a cover page is the first impression, or it's the first thing that the reader will see. When they find those magazines in the stand, or even in, uh, uh, in uh, bookshops, or even in different um, supermarkets, in different stands, whatever will attract them is the cover page. And you find that uh, a magazine should have a cover page that gives the reader a tantalizing taste and everything that is inside should uh, give uh, more that is uh, related uh, to the cover page therefore make your magazine's title prominent and also 
ensure that uh, your magazine tend to retain the same font, uh, although colors uh, may change in the inside, ensure that you are retaining the same font, and also ensure that uh, an editor has chosen a title that is easy to read, that is, uh, uh, it can be easily recognized, and that is attractive and tend to match with the content. And therefore, as we have said, that the cover page is what attracts your readers, and therefore it should be outstanding. Also, something else is the font, uh, the paper, and the color. And you find that uh, fonts uh, that are used in the magazine should be easy to read and fit uh, the theme. And therefore, it's always good to choose uh, a font type and also a font size that is easy to read and also fits uh, the theme. And uh, also the paper that uh, you will use, uh, it's a matter of choice whether you'll use the glossy paper or even the matte paper. And also the color should be carefully used, not to use colors anyhow. -ly. Also something else is the order of the content, and you find that uh, uh, each magazine should have the table of content and it should come first for the purposes of guiding the readers on where to find the stories and uh, the organization of the content inside the magazine it dictates how the readers will flip through their magazines and therefore have a table of content there is also the layout of the magazine and this touches on the formatting in terms of the borders the styles uh, the design itself and also the font uh, throughout uh, the pages and also the number of the pages uh, that uh, your magazine will have. And therefore, it's always good to ensure that your magazine is uh, well formatted. And now to the other element is uh, the publishing of the magazine. You find this is the last, uh, the last uh, step when you are creating a magazine. You have uh, decided on the target audience. You have decided on the theme. You have decided on the layout of the magazine. And therefore, once you are done with the creating the magazine, uh, you find uh, the last uh, thing that you will do is to publish your magazine. And in terms of publishing, it's a matter of decision based on your target audience. You may publish online or even you may print depending on your target audience. You find the young people, you'll find them online, but for the older people, they'll prefer going for the traditional way and therefore having the hard copy for them, it's a, a, a plus. And uh, after you have published uh, the magazines and you have opted uh, to print them, uh, for your readers, uh, you find you'll have to distribute uh, them. And uh, to our final uh, uh, topic or subtopic, you find uh, once you have uh, published uh, the magazines, you'll have to distribute or even to circulate them. And therefore, we will look at the circulations of magazines. And there are three means of uh, circulation. There are three means on how magazines are circulated. And number one is the paid circulation. And you find that uh, in uh, paid uh, circulation, it, in this method, you pay for you to acquire a magazine. And this is where readers pay a price for them to acquire a magazine. And also subscription. You can subscribe annually or even uh, uh, after six months for you to acquire a uh, uh, magazine. And these magazines can be even uh, be sent to you via the posters or by mail uh, once you have subscribed. But uh, for paid circulation, uh, you have to make some payment, uh, uh, whether by paying directly or through subscription. Also, the other method of, of uh, circulation is the free circulation or non-paid circulation. And you find that uh, there are magazines that are issued or given for free uh, to different uh, readers, maybe in the streets or even in the airline or even in different uh, uh, in uh, different uh, places where these magazines are included in the different uh, product or even publications. Once you have bought some product, you are given a free magazine. Once uh, you have bought a given publication, you find that inside that uh, publication there is a magazine that is uh, given for free. And therefore, free circulation or non-paid circulations, uh, you find that uh, you don't have to pay any amount for you to acquire the magazines. Also, there is another 
uh, means of uh, circulation, and this is the uh, controlled uh, circulation. You find that uh, with the controlled circulation, these uh, magazines are circulated only to qualifying readers. And you find most of the time they are offered for free. You don't have to pay for you to acquire these magazines, but they are offered to those uh, uh, readers who qualify. And uh, for, for you to, to conclude that some group of people uh, qualify to have the magazine, a survey is conducted. And therefore, these are ju this is just a method of circulation where the publications of these magazines are offered for free to only qualifying readers. And uh, for you to make conclusion that a given a group or some people qualify, you'll have to conduct a survey. And uh, there are factors uh, to consider uh, before starting a magazine. Uh, you find that uh, you'll have uh, to consider some few things uh, before you embark on the process of designing or even starting a business uh, that touches on creating uh, a magazine or even a writing and publishing magazine. Number one, you'll have to consider the cost. And uh, with the cost, uh, this is uh, the money, also the time and also action that will be required for the purposes of creating magazine. Number one, you'll have to have money to pay your writers. You'll have to have budgeted for money to pay your photographers. Also for the purchasing of uh, the glossy paper or the matte paper. Also for the purposes of printing. And therefore cost is a key factor. Also the content, and you find that uh, sourcing materials for the magazine uh, can be a tough, uh, can be tough, especially on a tight budget. Maybe you have uh, budgeted uh, for a small amount of money, and uh, you are expected to have a uh, content uh, uh, that uh, requires a lot of budgeting in terms of. Uh, conducting research in terms of uh, sending your writers uh, to different uh, locations for the purposes of getting the information and therefore consider the content in terms of the content that you want to appear in your magazine and consider it when you're budgeting for your magazine and you find that uh, also getting good writers uh, it uh, requires a lot of effort and therefore the sourcing of a content should be a factor to be considered. Also the competition, you find that there is a lot of competition as far as starting a magazine is concerned. There are different channels of communication that people prefer compared to magazines. People may opt to go to, to other means of communication like a, a online platform or even the TV or even the radio for the purposes of getting the same, same information that you are anticipating to offer to them. For entertainment, they can listen to sound downers other than reading entertainment uh, articles. For informative information, they may even uh, uh, prefer getting the, the same, same information from their websites and also their online platform. And therefore, there is a lot of competition from other um, channels of communication. Also, another factor to consider is uh, readership and uh, circulation. Uh, because you find that you are writing for readers uh, and you are writing for the purposes of distributing uh, these uh, magazines to different readers. Uh, before you embark on uh, starting a magazine, you're supposed even to see how many people are reading the magazines that have been there before and how many copies have been distributed or even circulated like uh, for the previous months. Uh, and from that, you are able to, to even make a sober decision in terms of uh, how much people will be paying for adverts and uh, how much copies uh, you, will pre you will print for the first time. Also consider the licensing requirements. Uh, you find that uh, in our country, even for a small business, you are required to have a permit and you are required to be licensed by the government. And also for the distribution, there are some uh, uh, amount that is uh, paid, especially when you are distributing within uh, different uh, towns. And therefore, that's also another requirement. You can't just make a, a decision without considering the cost, the content, and also the competition from other visual elements and also 
in terms of even competition, you find that uh, for your magazine to survive, uh, you'll have uh, to look for advertisers. And uh, some advertisers may opt to go for other channels of communication that are instant. If you're having a, a, an issue or even a, a, a magazine, publishing a magazine after like uh, three months or even uh, two months, uh, some uh, advertisers may, may find it harder to... Uh, to wait uh, until those uh, three months are over for the uh, advert to appear in your magazine. And therefore, these are just factors uh, to consider, and you should consider them before starting a magazine. And that brings us uh, to the end of our today's lecture. It was uh, nice having you. Thanks a lot. May God bless you. These televised lectures supplement our robust online learning going on on our MKU online platform. You can view more on our televised lectures via our online platform. We are in a digital era and Mount Kenya University knows this. The following are the steps to follow so as to complete your online application. Download the application form from the website www.mku.ac.ke Attach copies of your academic certificates and ID. Pay the application fees via M-Pesa pay bill number 270988. Your ID is the account number. 2,000 shillings is the charge for a postgraduate. You can also deposit in the bank accounts provided on the website. Then email all the above to apply at mku.ac.ke.